Buongiorno e benvenuti. My name is Giovanna and I welcome you to my kitchen on the cliff. Today we're going to make a favorite dish, favorite in my family and favorite when I taught at ICE, the Institute of Culinary Education, where this dish just amazed everybody, everybody loved it. And as you will see, the presentation of the dish is as wonderful as the taste of the dish. This is a traditional dish from my city of Ragusa. And the recipe was, was given to me by uh, my beloved friend, Josephine Skinina Lisandrello. Uh, Josephine and I were born two weeks apart and we were lifelong friends and I miss her a lot. But the recipe remains and delights people still. So we dedicate this to Josephine, to my dear Josephine. To begin, I'm going to slice the eggplant and I'm going to slice it with the skin because the skin is edible and it holds the piece together. So when you, when you fry it, you're able to turn it. So I'm going to take off the end and I'm going to take two slices of the skin away because otherwise the first and the last slice would be all skin and I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side I'm going to slice it thinly you know it's not important exactly how thin after this is sliced and fried it's going to be layered and uh, it, it will come out looking really gorgeous. You can use two or three eggplants, you know, depending on the size. I prefer smaller eggplants to very large ones because they have fewer seeds and they're generally sweeter, and more tender. The next step, we're going to layer and salt the eggplant. Okay, three slices. We take some kosher salt because it's coarse we sprinkle it on top. Don't worry, this is not going to go into the dish. It's a lot of salt. This will be rinsed off before we fry it. Always, when you have salt in something, it allows the juices of the particular vegetable or fruit to drain out. So that's why we use the salt. And this will very quickly drain the, the eggplant. Now we're going to take a cutting board, put it on top. I'm going to weigh down the eggplant with two cans, anything heavy, your tea kettle or anything that's heavy, put it on and let it sit like this for about a half an hour and you will see all the juices from the eggplant will collect in this tray. By, by the way, be sure to do it inside a tray of some kind that will hold the juices, otherwise it would go all over. Now we're going to make a very, very simple sauce. I'm going to pour a quarter of a cup of olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, in the pan. I know it sounds like a lot. It isn't. That's a quarter of a cup. Now I'm going to cut two garlic cloves. Okay, you can tell who's not a trained, a professionally trained chef by the way they cut their garlic, which is this way. You hold the garlic, you slice it, but not all the way, in two directions. Now you slice the garlic into the oil like this and guess what? It comes out chopped. See it? Okay, we turn the heat on, medium. We want the garlic to brown but not burn. Hello, pup. Hello, pup. Are you happy? Okay, watch the garlic because you don't want it to burn and it burns very easily. So don't move away from it, keep your eyes on it. I'm going to lower the heat. The garlic is just beginning to brown and we're going to add our tomatoes. And look how beautiful they are, look. Now I'm going to rinse the can. There's a lot left over in there. We don't want to waste it. Okay, we add that. We use the can as a spoon holder. And then we're going to add salt. That's a, about a teaspoon and a half of salt. We're going to add a level tablespoon of sugar. 
some people object to adding sugar to the tomato. Tomato is acidic and so uh, you can do all kinds of things. Some people put a pinch of bicarbonate, don't get bent over, out of shape over it. Now we're going to add this wonderful basil, see? Now here's one of the tricks of basil. Remove some of the lower leaves and leave the, the tip of the leaf in a glass of water. You can see it a little bit already. It will make roots. And once you've made roots, you take this, you make a hole in, in the earth, either in a pot or in the garden, with a chopstick, I, I like to do it that way, make a nice big hole and drop each one into the hole without breaking the, the uh, roots that have formed. Take the lower leaves of this bunch and the rest are going to root and I'm going to plant them. Okay, I'm going to cut it right into the pan. I can smell it already. I could smell it cutting it and I could smell it when it hits the, the hot sauce. You know, you can't put too much basil in a sauce. Basil is just wonderful, fragrant, delicious. Since this has no meat, it needs to cook only briefly. So we will cook this for about 20 minutes. Lower the heat, a tomato covering the tomato. I think that's a flour. No, that's a tomato. The tomatoes have cooked for 15 minutes. It means that the whole tomatoes are now soft. I'm just going to give it a little mash so that we still have pieces of tomato in the sauce. I'm using a potato masher because it's perfect. It has a flat bottom, as does the pan. So that's done. We're now going to cook it another 15 minutes to thicken it. The sauce will be lovely and thick and you can put it on anything you like. Well, it's time to see what's happened to the eggplant. Look how much liquid has come out. Okay, so that liquid is slightly bitter, so we take it out this way. This is not an essential step. I'm just showing it to you because that's how we did it traditionally. So here's what I'm going to do next. Remember, I put a lot of salt on this, and I told you that the salt was going to be washed away. Washing away the salt and washing away any additional liquid. After it's been rinsed, it's going to be uh, dried with the paper towel. So Howard, my husband of 60 years, is not only a top-rate taster, but he's also an assistant chef. So here we go. This is a special apron that we got from Giovanni, my cousin in Rome. <laughs> These eggplants have been sliced, salted, pressed, and dried, and rinsed and dried. So now we're going to, Howard is going to fry them. So we're going to use some vegetable oil. Such as canola oil. Canola or corn oil. We're just covering the bottom of the pan. We're going to turn on the gas. We're going to put it at a medium. Okay, we'll let the oil warm up. This is a non-stick pan, but you can use a cast iron one if you have it. We find this one works very well. Yes. You might have noticed that the eggplant is not coated with anything. It's not coated with flour. It's not coated with egg and flour. It's just the eggplant that's been rinsed and dried. It's going to be fried just like that. That's how we like it because I think the coatings, the, particularly if it's eggs and flour, uh, take away from the taste and the texture of the eggplant. So we like to do it plain, without any kind of coating. Just waiting for the oil to get good and hot. It'll form tiny bubbles around the perimeter. Once that happens, we can pick up the eggplant and place it in the hot oil. You can hear that it's hot. Now you can see it's really bubbly. Take a peek now and then. Now, needs another couple of minutes. Did you have eggplant a lot when you were a kid? No. <laughs> Giovanna really got me to eat it. Eat it. My, my mother was Irish, and so uh, a lot of the things that Giovanna made were really new to me. It still needs more color than this. It's beginning 
to show a little bit of brown. Ah, that's a little bit more. There we go. I turn it every once in a while to be sure I don't leave it in one position too long. But this is a very good non-stick pan. We use vegetable oil because it doesn't really add much flavor. We don't want to change the taste of it. Voila! <laughs> it's all done! Wow! Good job! Wonderful! Okay. Thank you! I've done it a few times before. I know. You're an expert. I am now going to assemble the layered eggplant. It does very much help to have a frittata pan. This is 50 years old. I bought this on the Italian Riviera in Rapallo where we used to go to visit my grandmother every summer. And um, this of course is a pan that you make an omelet, you make a frittata, and when you're ready to turn it all you have to do is this. So it's fabulous. Now this 50 year old pan is in almost perfect condition. It's still non-stick as a matter of fact because I've never allowed anybody to touch it. This is mine, and nobody can touch it. Nobody. So it's hinged, obviously, see? This is hinged, and so you can turn it. So I'm going to heat it very, very slowly. So what we're going to do is to make three layers of eggplant, and with each layer, you're going to season it with a little bit of the tomato sauce we made before and freshly grated uh, cacio cavallo. The breadcrumbs will be the first layer. So first, let's get some olive oil. All right, I'm, I'm uh, distributing the olive oil on the surface of the pan, and I'm going to do the same on the other pan. So the olive oil is heated and I'm going to turn it off because it's going to take me a little bit of time to assemble it and I don't want it to cook now. I'm going to take some breadcrumbs and I'm going to sprinkle it on the surface of this pan. I'm going to use two tablespoons. And now I'm going to distribute it Okay, I have a nice coating of breadcrumbs. These, of course, are plain breadcrumbs. Don't buy breadcrumbs that have seasoning because the seasoning is parsley and herbs and stuff like that. You don't want that dried and sitting in a can. Plain breadcrumbs, you don't want any seasoning. You're the one who decides what to put in it. Now I'm going to make the first layer of eggplant. So I'm going to arrange it so that when you turn it, that will be the top. I'm going to take the nicer slices. I'm going to fill in these spaces now. We want to cover the, the whole bottom of the pan. This is the beautiful saucer we made before. See how thick it is? with the little pieces of uh, basil and tomato. Okay, so this I'm going to use like three tablespoons. Very little actually. This should not be swimming in tomato sauce. It should be just flavored. With the cheese you can be liberal. You can have a good amount of cheese. Okay. A nice coating of grated cheese. So it looks like about two heaping tablespoons of cheese. Okay, now we're going to add a second layer. Now this second layer is not going to be visible, so I'm just going to 
do this. Okay, now the tomato sauce. One, two, and three. By the way, you can use any tomato sauce you have in the house. You don't have to make it especially. But if you want to make it and you want to make a plain sauce that you can use for many other things, then do so. Now we're going to put the cheese. Okay. Last layer. You know, you patch it up so that you have an even layer. You know, you cut a piece and you patch it. I'm going to take just the smallest possible amount of sauce to moisten this. You don't want a lot of liquid. See, I use just one tablespoon just to moisten the top. Okay, now I'm going to make the layer of breadcrumbs. All right, now this is where you have to use all your senses. You have to use your hearing, you have to use your smell, you have to use your eyes, everything gets used here. I'm going to turn the heat on. So, remember that there is nothing in this pan that has to cook. Everything is already cooked. All we have to do is make it into a solid mass. Don't be tempted to move this at, a, at all in the beginning. What I'm going to do is wait until I smell it. You know, there's no way of looking at the bottom to see if it's done. So the only way you can tell if it's done is if you smell it. When you start smelling those breadcrumbs getting brown, that's when you turn it. But until the first smell of this, you don't touch it. It's just going to cook slowly, crisp up the breadcrumbs, and then once I smell it, I'm going to move it in the pan. I'll show you how. Okay. First sign, can you hear it? You hear the sizzling? Okay, that's important. Now I'm going to turn the heat on and the other half of the pan. Obviously, if it starts burning, you are going to smell that. So you have to be very, very careful. First you hear the sizzle, and then you're going to smell basically the toasted breadcrumbs. Now, you see what I'm doing? I'm shaking the pan so that I'm sure that nothing is stuck on the bottom. So this is perfect. If you go to Italy, buy yourself, I bought two and I've used them all my life. I bought a small one and a larger one. And essentially for this dish, but also for frittate, because frittate are, are wonderful. They, they make a quick lunch, they're delicious. You could put anything you want in them, whatever vegetables you have left over. We did a frittata video so you can see that. But essentially the frittata is eggs with anything that else that's around. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it. See what I'm doing? Not sticking anywhere, it's moving. Okay, so now take this. We join the two. One, two, three. Look at that, look at that. Nothing stuck to the pan. Now, if you, if you don't have one of these, my friend Josephine never had one of these pans. What she did was, she would turn this onto a plate and then just put it back in the frying pan. You can do it either way. All right, now we're going to do the same thing. We hear the sizzle and now you're going to wait until you smell it. And when you do, it's finished. These, by the way, are non-stick pans. I bought them 50 years ago, and they are still non-stick. But I've always washed them by hand, I've dried them, and I've put them away. And uh, they're lasting for my whole lifetime. 
Now, I love raised plates. Everybody knows that a cake looks best in a raised plate, but everything looks best in a raised plate. So I love uh, this particular one uh, is the same size as this frying pan, and this turned on to a raised uh, plate it just looks wonderful. When you bring it to, to the table or you put it down for a, for a buffet, it really, it really looks uh, splendid. Well, no, no. I, I don't have the patience of letting it cool in the pan. Also, I would be afraid of it sticking. So I just let it cool a little bit. I, I let it stop sizzling and then I turn it. Okay, I'm taking my plate, putting it over the frying pan. So this is where you have to concentrate and be very careful, that's all. Now while it's here, you can still maneuver it, bring it towards the center of the platter. Okay, everybody ready? There it is. You see, the presentation like this is really just beautiful. And it'll taste much better, of course. All right, now everybody knows how to make layered eggplant. We made it this afternoon, and this is now at room temperature, which is as it should be. This can be served as uh, an antipasto, it can be served as a lunch, it can be served with a salad. I'm serving it as an antipasto, just this. But you can also serve this in the same dish with a little bit of pasta with the leftover sauce. You could also take it on a picnic. You could also take it on a picnic, you could also make a sandwich. See, it cuts very easily. So, buon appetito. Buon Grazie. Now let's see. Oh, here's a dog. No, this isn't for you. Mm -mm. This is not for you, my little one. It's for me. Mm. Mm. What I like about this is that you really get the, the taste of the, of the eggplant. You know, there's no Nothing extraneous, just a little bit of cheese and a tiny bit of tomato sauce. And now the rest of the sauce can be used for, for a dish accompanying this. If you want to make a lunch, you, you serve a piece of this and you serve a little bit of pasta with the sauce that we made earlier and it will be delicious. <laughs> Come here, Palm. Hello, Palm. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And see you again soon. Ciao. Ciao. <laughs>